Yo, what's good? Wolfie Wolf here, and this is Dubstep 101. In this tutorial, we'll cover some of the basic ideas and concepts that go into writing a dubstep track. This video is great for beginners looking to write their first track, but also has some tips and tricks for the more advanced producers out there. While we'll be focusing mostly on dubstep, these concepts will apply to all different types of bass music, including trap, bass house, and halftime drum and bass. With that being said, let's get started. So the first and probably most important section I want to go over today is drums. Um, so dubstep's typically at a tempo of about 140 beats per minute, with modern dubstep ranging up to about 150 beats per minute. And we're going to actually work at 150 today. Let's go over all the elements that make up a typical dubstep drum kit. First up we have the kick. Next the snare. Then the clap. Hi-hats. Ride. And the crash. Additional elements could be toms, shakers, uh, tambourines, foley sound effects, um, really anything that's going to make it interesting and fill up certain frequency ranges. Now we can move on to the drum arrangement. So first up let's add the kick drum. I'm going to use this AU5 kick. And then let's also add a snare drum. How about the snare 43? Typically you're going to want the kick on the one or the downbeat and the snare will come on the three. So if you count one, two, three, the kick would be on the one, the snare on the three. Let's see how that sounds. Well, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. Next, let's add some hi-hats. Pretty basic beat. After you have your hi-hats, let's add in some rides. Typically, that's going to go in between the uh, kick and snare on the two. Now let's add another ride on the one and three to kind of alternate between the two. And to kind of finish out this loop, let's add a crash. Cool. Okay, so another thing I like to do to kind of fill in the beat is to add a chant on the two. So you, you'll hear this used a lot. You can even turn it down quite a bit and just keep it very subtle in the mix, but it really helps fill things out and add some kind of human organic energy to the drums. Yeah, let's turn that down a little bit. Sweet, so we have an eight bar loop now to start off this track with. So here's what we have so far. I feel like that has one too many crashes, so I'm gonna go ahead and consolidate this clip into one and take out every other crash. Let's add a little bit of variation by adding another kick. Uh, 
and I'll duplicate that. Sounds pretty good so far. Of course you'd like to add more variation, but this is a pretty typical dubstep style beat to get you started. All right, now that we got the drums laid out, let's go ahead and move on to the bass. Okay, so we are back and it is bass line time. So the bass line is what's gonna give it that noticeably dubstep sound. Um, there are a million different ways to write bass lines, but there are also a few tried and true methods that I've noticed really tend to work well in the club. Um, I'm gonna show you one of those right now. So I'm gonna make a MIDI track here just to show you the general arrangement of the bass line we're gonna shoot for. So you'll hear this used in a, a million tracks, but it works really well. A lot of the time they're gonna be a single bass note that will encompass all the way until the first snare. And this is gonna be like your drop growl kind of sound. Um, usually this is not layered too much with a bunch of different things. It's usually one solid sound on its own to give it that punch on the drop. That will usually be followed by some sort of secondary bass. I'm going to make this a different color for visual purposes. And then we will duplicate that. And then there will be an ending sound right here. We'll make that a different color. So this is going to be our general ABC format. This one A, B, and C. So now I'm going to insert the audio track. And let's pick out some samples to fill in these sections. Let's go into the Alien Energy sample pack I made for Gravitas Create. Now this has a ton of baseline content. All split up by tempo. But all of these are gonna be just bass stabs that we can use. Let's see, how about... Okay, that sounds like a good drop sound. And see how this is the length of the A section? That'll work as our first drop sound. Let's go ahead and duplicate that to fill in the second A. All right, now we're gonna need a secondary bass line to kind of fill in the B section. Let's add another audio track. And... I'm gonna use one of these Neuro Wob bass lines. Sounds pretty good. Let's duplicate that. Okay, we're going to trim off the end of the second bass line to make room for section C. We don't necessarily need a bass line in here, just something to fill it up and show that it's the end of that phrase. So how about we go into some synth fills. These are pretty atonal synth fills that I use to uh, fill at the end of a phrase. Kind of like a drum fill. Let's see. Let's try this one. Sounds pretty sweet. Now I want to fill in something right here where there's a little empty spot. Let's 
try this. I like that little last scratch kind of sample at the end. No. Let's try. How about this one? So now that we have a four bar loop, let's go ahead and select all of this and duplicate it and make it into an eight bar loop. And we're gonna do the same one more time. And this will be, the second eight bar loop will be our section B. I'm gonna right click up here and add a locator and mark this section B. So with section B, I wanna replace a lot of the sounds from section A, but keep the same structure and groove so it has a similar vibe. Let's start out by making a new drop sound. We're gonna insert an audio track and pick out a new drop. Let's try this one. I'm going to cut it down to the same size as the original clip and we can delete these ones. I'll go ahead and duplicate these. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Pretty dope. Now I'm going to switch out this neuro wobble to add some more variation to the sounds. Insert audio track, and we'll go back over here and find a new neuro wobble. Ooh, I like this one. Let's delete these and trim this down to size. I'll go ahead and duplicate all these. I'm gonna trim back this last one and this one, so they don't overlap this little fill. Let's hear how they differ from the first loop. See how it has some subtle differences to the sound, but the groove is very similar, so it doesn't change it up too much and throw you off. So that about wraps up the general layout for the bass line. Of course, we could come in here and make more edits, but uh, I think for the purpose of the tutorial, this should work. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the intro. Now, a standard dubstep intro is usually about 16 to 32 bars. Now, what we can do is highlight everything we've created so far, click Create, and Insert Silence. And this is going to give us uh, 16 bars of silence before everything we've done. Next, we're gonna to wanna to drag out the drum loop all the way the entire 16 bar intro. And I've already pulled up the Alien Energy synth loops. Let's find one that we think would sound good with this.
Okay, I like this one. I'm gonna drag this over here into the arrangement view and drag it out the full 16 bars. Let's hear how that sounds with the drums. Pretty sweet. Now, next I wanna add a second synth that comes in on the nine bar marker. I'm gonna insert audio track. Since we worked in the key of F last time, let's go ahead and use uh, another synth loop that's in the key of F. This one should sound good with it. Pretty tight. Now, on this last two bars, I'm going to hit Control E and that will split this drum loop into its own little section right here. You would want to do it on the first or the beginning and the end of the section you're trying to work on. And so see now it made its own little loop. Now I'm going to right click it and then hit consolidate or hit Control J. And that will make this loop cropped and ready to work on without affecting the ones around it. We can also change this to a different color to let us know that it's different. I'm gonna go in and make the snare the last sound before the drop. Giving a little bit of silence before the drop really uh, adds that contrast element. The silence before the heavy volume is like putting white against black. Like it just makes it really pop whenever it drops on a nice club sound system. Nice. I'm gonna play this once more from the nine bar marker. Let's uh, select this section right here, hit Control D and duplicate this so it's just kicks. There's no snare until the last section. I'll go ahead and change this just for visual purposes. Sweet, sounds pretty good so far. In order to clean this up a little bit, I'm just gonna select the whole bass section, every track we've worked on in there, and just group these and collapse the group. That'll give us a little cleaner work area. Now the next thing I wanna do for the intro is add a white noise riser. That's gonna add a lot of energy and motion to the track. Um, I actually have a tutorial on how to make a white noise riser over on the Gravitas Create YouTube page. So if you're curious how to make one from scratch using native Ableton plugins, uh, head over there and check out the tutorial. So now I'm going to make a MIDI clip with this. I'm going to select the section I want it to encompass. Hit Control M or Control Shift M, sorry. And then the song is an F, so I will drag out a MIDI note, the entire length. And actually I'm going to cut it back to right where the snare hits. Now this white noise instrument rack I've built um, works with a macro knob. The macro, as you turn it up, will increase the volume and the frequency of the white noise. So I'll give you a little example of what it sounds like. So let's hear that with the track. So 
Sweet, sounds pretty good. We can also add a smaller white noise riser in between sections at the end of the measure. We'll go back to the automation. Adding these risers in before the next section kind of adds anticipation and lets the listener know um, that a next section is about to begin. I'm gonna add one more of these by duplicating this entire section to add one to section B. Now that gives us a pretty basic intro and you don't really need a whole lot for intros considering most DJs will be using those to mix. So if you put too much going on, it can get a little uh, difficult to for the DJ to mix. I think what we have right now sounds pretty good, so we can go ahead and move on to some more arrangement. I'm going to turn loop on this section and go ahead and drag these drums out. This breakdown section is pretty similar to the intro. I'll go ahead and copy uh, the synth lines that we have over onto this section as well. And I'd also like to add a sub in here, so I'm going to insert a MIDI track. By default, I have my MIDI track to load Serum, my favorite VST. And we're just gonna turn on the sub oscillator and turn off oscillator A. Let's bring this down a little bit. And a trick with subs is to add a bit of saturation to it. That'll bring out the harmonics and make it a lot easier to hear on smaller speakers. We can put this on soft sign, bump the drive up just a little bit, and the output down a little bit. And the song is an F, so I'm gonna draw on a MIDI note. Hit Control Shift M. If I hit shift and down, it's gonna take this MIDI note down an octave. Let's take it down one more. I'm gonna chop this into smaller sections, like so. Actually, let's do that even smaller. I'm gonna turn the loop on, which it's already on. I'm gonna make this smaller and then adjust the loop. Next, let's uh, make a little build up here without the drums. Once again, I'm gonna duplicate the synth lines. I'm gonna copy the white noise riser. Move this over here. Let's see how this would sound from the, from the breakdown to the build up to the drop. I'm gonna activate the loop with the marker set to 17 and 49. Let's hear how this sounds. See, it sounds a little empty. I think we need something to fill in this section a little bit more and another little drum build up to let you know that the drop is about to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the drums from this drop over here. And let's go back to the Alien Energy Pack. I have some sub sweeps that will help fill in this section. Let's 
copy this over here. I'm going to turn off the warp. Bring this down a little bit. Oh, looks like this got turned down quite a bit somewhere along the way. I'm going to bump this back up. So that sounds pretty good. So let's go ahead and copy over the drop to the second drop area. And let's start working on our outro. The outro is essentially gonna be the same thing as the breakdown and second buildup. So we can copy and paste the entire section over here. And let's take away these drums at the end because we don't really need those because the drop isn't happening right here. And if a DJ is mixing in, they'll probably have their own drums from the track they're mixing in happening. So we don't want those to overlap too much. So this is a pretty slimmed down uh, basic version of what a dubstep track looks like, but this gives you the general idea of the layout. I'm gonna go ahead and place some locators in here so you can see the layout a bit more clearly. So this would be the intro. This would be drop one, section B, breakdown, build two, or build up, drop two, Breakdown two and outro. So there you have it, a pretty standard layout for a dubstep tune. I'm gonna work on this a bit more, make a few edits and I'll check back in and show you how it sounds after that. So that about wraps things up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned some things. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time. Peace.